So today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about refrigerant and how much you can put into a recovery cylinder. So this is a pretty typical recovery cylinder you'll see HVAC guys using. These ones are both full right now of R22 that I've recovered. And I had the same question, I was wondering how much refrigerant you're allowed to put in them. And I was a little bit confused about how to figure that out. Uh, I understand it now, so I'm gonna just explain it to you while it's fresh in my mind. So what you have to do is take a look at your jug and find on there where it says WC. In this case, it's 47.6. We got the same thing on this one, WC 47.6. So that is the water capacity. That is how much water you could put in here, is 47.6 pounds of water. Now the water capacity isn't actually very useful for us and we wanna convert it instead to cubic feet. So we need to figure out how many cubic feet our container is. We're gonna divide that by the density of water, which is 62.5. So that gives us 0 0.76. So that means this jug has an internal volume of 0.76 cubic feet. Next, we're gonna figure out our liquid saturation density of our refrigerant at 130 degrees. This is their standard because the densities change a little bit as the temperature increases or decrease, decreases. The liquid density of R22 at 130 degrees is 66.17. And that number is going to change depending on what refrigerant you're recovering. So if it's 134A, it might just be a little bit more, a little bit less. So you'll have to look that up specifically for your refrigerant that you're recovering. So next we're going to take our cylinder volume, which is that 0.76 that we established earlier, and we're going to times it times the liquid density of R22 at 130 degrees which is 66.17. 66.17 times our 0.76 cubic feet gives us 50.28. So now we're gonna take that times 0 0.80 because we're only allowed to fill these jugs to 80% of their capacity. You're not allowed to fill them more than 80%. This jug would be able to, if you filled it all the way, hold 50.28 pounds of refrigerant, but 80% of that is only 40.23. So the short answer is, these cylinders can hold about 40 pounds. And you'll be able to figure that out even with big cylinders like that one back there, because it's gonna tell you the WC or water capacity of that jug. And then you just have to convert it to cubic feet and then you have to take the liquid saturation density of your refrigerant at 130 degrees times the capacity times 0 0.80 because you only want to use 80% of what's available inside your jug. Uh, let's just run through those numbers again. So we're going to take our 47.6 which is our water capacity divided by the liquid density of water, which is 62.5, equals 0 0.76. Then we're gonna take this number times our liquid saturation density of R22 at 130 degrees, which was 66.17, equals our 50.39, but we're only allowed to fill 80%, so we're gonna times that times 0 0.80 and that is how we figure out how much refrigerant we can put in here now you're going to be weighing the entire jug so unless you tear out that first weight which is right here our tw tear weight is 27 on this so we're actually going to add 27 to figure out our total volume so when this thing is full, it's going to weigh 67.31 pounds. Even though it could technically hold more refrigerant than the 80% that you have in there, it's never allowed to be more than 67 pounds for this particular cylinder. Of course, that's going to change. I actually haven't calculated what it is for this one. Kind of fun to figure that out. But I don't think I'm going to fill it. So recovering refrigerant here. You can see this is getting kind of frosty. Um, obviously this wouldn't happen unless the crankcase heater was off, which the snappy electrician was here and he uh, disconnected the power. So that's why we have refrigerant sitting in the compressor. So the short answer is if it has a water capacity 
of 47.6, you're probably gonna be able to hold about 40 pounds of refrigerant. It only varies a little bit from refrigerant to refrigerant, but if you wanna do it the technical way, that's the way to do it. And again, I'll just put that formula right here so you can remember it for later. Um, anyway, hope that you found this video helpful and uh, good luck recovering refrigerant. I assume that's why you'd be watching this. Unless you're weird and you just like this sort of content. <laughs> anyway, hope that you enjoyed. Talk to you later. Whew, that wasn't so bad. Definitely not gonna do that again.